Let us see the next question. X Limited is providing following information. Currently, X Limited is doing business of trading of chemicals. The proportion of the debt financing in the capital structure is 20 percentage. That is, weight of debt financing is given as 0 0.20 and weight of equity is given as 0 0.80. Beta of equity is given to us as 1.5. Now, this company is diversifying into new line of business. The new line of the business is quarter line. The proxy firm that is a company which is doing similar business in which we are diversifying is Taj group of hotels. The proportion of the debt financing in the capital structure which Taj group of the hotels have is 0 0.30 that is weight of debt financing. Its beta is given to us as 1.60. X limited is going to keep 25% debt in the capital structure in case of new line of the business. So we understand that say the current information which is provided to us is of no use to us. Because say it is going to have the debt financing of 25% in the for financing the new capital structure. Suppose we would not have been given that say what is the amount of the debt financing that it is going to keep for the new line of the business we can fairly make an assumption that it is going to continue with the existing capital structure. But over here, you don't have to make such assumption. The return on the market portfolio is 30 percentage. The screen rate of return is 12 percentage. Income tax rate is 40 percentage. The question says that say, calculate the required rate of return for X limited from the new line of the business. That is the question. So we are required to say make the computation of the required rate of return from the new line of the business. Highlight the portion income tax rate information is given to us which is 40 percentage. I request all of you to go through the question please. Now once again friends there are three steps in which we are required to do answer. Let me explain you. Step number one will be calculation of beta of unlevered equity. Step number 2 will be beta of levered equity and step number 3 will be weighted average or overall cost of capital. These are the three steps in which we are required to do answer. There is no, there is a change in its sequence. Listen carefully what I am going to speak. <clears throat> now, this time the information of the income tax is given. Whenever the tax information is given, then beta of unlevered equity is formed as beta of levered equity divided by 1 plus debt into 1 minus t divided by equity. That is a simple equation that we are required to keep for calculation of beta of unlevered equity. The formula that we apply will change and beta of unlevered equity will be found using this formula. So this is the only change that we have so for calculation of the answer. So let us start making calculation of the answer. <clears throat> In some time we are understanding so the derivation of the formula but first of all let us complete this answer and then I am explaining the derivation of the formula. Let us answer for the question. First point. In this question. We are required to calculate the required rate of return for X limited from new line of business full stop second point 
इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट न्यू कैपिटल स्ट्रक्चर of x limited to finance new project is provided full stop so information about existing capital structure is irrelevant full stop third point in the trend down existing beta is always useless of diversifying firm stop next point importantly income tax rate information is given full stop so for finding beta of undivided equity comma we will use following formula So please write down the formula. Beta of asset slash beta of unlevered equity is equal to beta of levered equity divided by one plus debt into one minus t upon equity. This is the way we are required to apply the formula. Please write down the formula. So I request all of you to make the calculation of the beta of unlevered equity using proxy form. Then I will do. Next, I want you to calculate the beta of levered equity applicable to X limited. Then I will do. Weighted average cost of capital you do, then I do. That is the way we will do the answer in the sequence. So I request all of you to do answer of the beta of unlevered equity. from the given information so let us start making calculation step number 1 calculation of beta of levered equity in the trend down i'm sorry beta of unlevered equity which is also given a name as beta of asset in the trend down in order to compute beta of unlevered equity slash beta of asset comma we will use proxy form information
full stop we will use beta of levered equity and capital structure of proxy firm so in that write down beta of levered equity is equal to beta of unlevered equity is equal to beta of levered equity divided by 1 plus debt into 1 minus t upon equity this is the way we have to form the equation okay so now we can see that over here the question is providing the information beta of the levered equity is 1.60 and the debt financing is 30 percentage so this is 1.60 divided by 1 plus 0 0.30 into income tax rate is only 40 percentage divided by 0 0.70 This is the way we are required to make the calculation of answer. So I request all of you to use your calculator once again. 0.6 into 0.3 that is 0 0.18, 0 0.18 upon 0 0.7. Okay. What I have, I have done friends, 0 0.6 into 0 0.3 that comes to 0 0.18, 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.7, 0 0.2571. So we will have the answer like this. 1.60 divided by 1.2571 so please use your calculator 1.6 upon 1.2571 so 1.2728 that is the way the beta of unlevered equity is calculated now try to do step number 2 on your own Step number two is calculation of the beta of lever equity. Step number two, calculation of beta of lever equity applicable for X limited. Let us see that say how to calculate the same beta of unlevered equity is equal to beta of levered equity divided by 1 plus debt into 1 minus t divided by equity beta of levered equity divided by 1 plus debt into 1 minus t upon equity this is a way we are required to make the calculation of answer now beta of levered equity is required to be found so beta of levered equity is equal to beta of unlevered equity into 1 plus debt into 1 minus t upon equity Like this. Okay. What is beta of unlevered equity, dear students? Beta of unlevered equity is 1.2728. 1.2728 into 1 plus debt financing in the capital structure. You can see that so the question is providing that we are going to keep 25% debt in the capital structure. So we understand that so the debt financing is 0.25 into 1 minus 0 0.40 divided by equity financing is 0 0.75 this is the way we are required to make the calculation of answer so please use your calculator 1 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.6 
So this will be 1.20 into 1.2728 1.2728 into 1.20 So 1.5274 That is the way the beta of lever equity is calculated. Now we will make further calculation of the answer that is step number 3 weighted average cost of capital. Again, you do calculation, then I will do working for you. So, let us answer step number 3. Calculation of weighted average cost of capital. In that, step number A or working note A, something like that. Calculation of cost of equity. Working note number one. It is Rf plus beta into Rf minus Rf. This is the way we are required to calculate K. What is the risk free rate of return? It is 12 percentage. What is beta? Beta is 1.5274. What is the return on the market portfolio? 30 percentage. The risk free rate of return is 12. So 12 plus 1.5274 into 18. So 12 plus 1.5274 into 18. That comes to 27.49. Plus 12. 37.49. That is the way, first of all, we will calculate the cost of equity. Next, working note number 2, calculation of cost of debt financing. Again friends, we have an assumption that say we will be able to borrow at a risk free rate of return that is 12 percentage. So it is rate of interest into 1 minus t because in absence of any information that is a rational assumption that we can make. Income tax rate is only 40 percentage. So 12 percent into 0.6 that comes to 7.2 percentage. That is the way first of all weight that is cost of equity and cost of debt is found. Then calculation of WACC. It will be calculated as cost of equity into weight of equity plus cost of debt into weight of debt. That is what we understand. Cost of equity is 37.49. Into weight of equity is 25% debt. So 75% equity. Cost of debt financing is 7.2. Into weight of debt financing is 0.25. So this is the way we compute the weighted average cost of capital. 37.49 into 0.75 that comes to 28.12 plus 7.2 into 0.25 that is 1.8 plus 28.12 so 29.92. This is the way weighted average or overall cost of capital is calculated. So I request all of you to make the calculation of the weighted average cost of capital. Sorry, there is a calculation error on my end. It is 39.49. It is 39.49. So 39.49 into 0.75. So 29.6 no. plus 1.8 so 31.42 that is the way weighted average or overall cost of capital will be found. So small summary of the entire answer first of all we have calculated the beta of unlevered equity 
it is calculated by using the formula like this because the taxed information is given to us. We understand that say X limited is diversifying into new line of the business. So taking into account the proxy firm information, we make the calculation of the beta of unlevered equity that is beta of asset. Afterwards taking into account the capital sector that say we are going to keep, we make the calculation of the beta of levered equity. This is what the beta of the levered equity. And lastly, we make the computation of the weighted average or overall cost of capital. That is consisting of three components, KE, KD and WACC. That is the way the answer is calculated. Now friends, understanding, so the derivation of the formula, say of beta of unlevered equity, say by using this equation. That is, so this is what so now I am going to explain. Now friends, the derivation of the formula only for understanding purpose is that is said done in this way. Dear students over here, the concept that say we have studied in case of net operating income approach with taxes will be applicable once again. In that case, say again on x axis we take an independent factor that is proportion of the debt financing in capital structure. And on y axis we take the cost of capital. On x axis we take debt financing in capital structure. And on y axis we take the cost of capital. When there is no debt financing at that time, cost of equity and weighted average cost of capital are same. Now when you go on introducing the debt financing, what will happen? Expectation of the equity shareholder increases. So it goes like this. This is key. However, the company is getting advantage. That is the levered firm is getting advantage of the interest tax saving. So the weighted average cost of capital is falling down. This is what we understand. This is the kind of diagram that we have, say in case of NOI approach with taxes. Exactly the same concept has been used over here for the purpose of making calculation. So let us understand the derivation. <clears throat> for that, I am giving you explanation like this. First of all, let us understand calculation of interest tax saving. Dear students, as far as the interest tax savings is concerned, it is indicating the amount of the tax that you are able to save due to payment of interest. And it is calculated by using the formula interest into income tax rate. That is the way the interest tax saving is calculated. Next, I am explaining you calculation of present value of interest tax saving. present value of interest tax saving. Dear students, I hope you recall that say capital sector theories have an explanation that whatever may be the debt financing or equity financing, say it has been issued for perpetuity. So we will get the advantage of the interest tax saving for perpetuity. So how we can convert the same in present value term? We'll apply a formula like this. P0 is equal to, that is present value of the cash inflow is equal to A1 divided by I. What is A1? A1 is interest tax saving divided by I. I stands for the rate of interest. So it is P0 is equal to A1 divided by I. Okay, the amount of the interest tax saving is, as I explained to you, it is interest into tax rate. That is the way it is interest tax saving. 
divided by I stands for the rate of interest. Now, how do you compute the interest? Interest is calculated as value of debt financing into rate of interest. That is the amount of interest into income tax rate divided by rate of interest once again. So what will happen? The rate of interest will be cancelled against one another. The rate of interest is cancelled against one another and we will have the interest check saving as value of debt financing into income tax rate. This is what we understand. Now, as far as NOI approach with taxes is concerned, we know that say, the value of levered firm is calculated as value of unlevered firm plus present value of the interest tax saving, which is calculated as value of debt financing into income tax rate. That is what say, we understand. Now, as far as the value of the levered firm is concerned, it is consisting of value of levered equity plus value of debt financing. Levered firm has like the consisting of two, two values is equal to value of unlevered firm plus present value of interest tax saving that is value of debt financing into income tax rate. Now I keep value of unlevered firm over here and present value of the interest tax saving is transferred on the opposite side. So value of unlevered firm is equal to value of levered equity plus value of debt minus value of debt into income tax rate. Value of levered equity plus value of debt into 1 minus income tax rate. This is the way value of unlevered firm is calculated. So we derive a formula like this for value of unlevered firm. This is going to be useful later on for the derivation of the formula. Now we know that say value of unlevered firm is calculated like this earning before interest and taxes minus interest that is earning before taxes into 1 minus t is earning after taxes. We know that so there is no preference or capital. Whatever is the earning after taxes itself is the earning available to equity shareholders and we know that so there is 100% dividend payout ratio. So it is divided with cost of unlevered equity. That is the way value of the unlevered firm is calculated. Since it is unlevered firm, so as far as the amount of the interest is concerned, it is zero. So we understand that say value of unlevered firm is equal to earning before interest and taxes into 1 minus tax rate divided by cost of unlevered equity. This is the way, so we form the other equation. This is the way the two equations are formed. Now, value of the unlevered form is equal to this. Again, value of unlevered equal that is form is equal to this. So we can form an equation. The equation can be formed as value of levered equity plus value of debt financing into 1 minus tax rate is equal to earning before interest and taxes into 1 minus t divided by cost of unlevered equity. Okay. Now I keep EBIT into 1 minus t over here only and cost of unlevered equity is transferred on the left hand side. So what will happen? Earning before interest and taxes into 1 minus t is equal to value of levered equity into cost of unlevered equity plus value of debt into cost of unlevered equity into 1 minus income tax rate. This is the way we derive an another formula. This is what say, we can say is a kind of equation number 1 which we are going to use later on. 
So this is given a name as equation number 1 that we are going to use later on. Another thing that, say I'm, that is say calculating cost of levered equity minus cost of unlevered equity. All these things are going to be useful for the purpose of deriving the formula. What is the cost of levered equity? It is Rf plus beta of levered equity into Rm minus Rf minus what is cost of unlevered equity? Rf plus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf. This is the way, so we have the equation. Now when you open the bracket, what will happen? Rf plus beta of levered equity into Rm minus Rf. You open this bracket. So it is minus Rf minus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf. Now what will happen? This Rf is getting cancelled against this Rf. So what will happen? It is beta of levered equity into Rm minus Rf minus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf. Now Rm minus Rf is taken common. So what will happen? Beta of levered equity minus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf in the bracket. This is what say, we understand is the equation number 2. Again that is going to be used by us later on for the purpose of deriving the formula. So what will happen friends? Uh, in the deriving the formula, we will have at one point of time this value. So whenever we will find that value, say we will replace the same with this value. What is logic for that? I have explained it over here. Again in the derivation of the formula, at one point of time, we will find something like this. At that time, say I will replace that value with this value. Why? For that say I have provided explanation over here. This entire explanation. Okay. Next. Cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest. Let us understand its derivation. Cost of unlevered equity is Rf plus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf minus what is rate of interest? It is Rf plus beta of debt into Rm minus Rf. This is what we understand. Okay. So it is Rf plus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf. Once again when you open the bracket, so this will be minus Rf. This will be minus beta of debt into Rm minus Rf. Okay. Now again what will happen? Positive Rf is cancelled against negative Rf. So we will be having so the equation as beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf minus beta of debt into Rm minus Rf. So Rm minus Rf is taken common. Beta of unlevered equity minus beta of debt into Rm minus Rf. We know that say in absence of an information, beta of the debt is always zero. So I'm rewriting the equation. Beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rf considering the beta of debt to be zero. This is our equation number three. So as I've explained to you dear students, whenever we come across set to a value like this, cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest, 
it will be replaced so with a value like this beta of only word equity into rf minus rf with that set will be replaced now the real derivation starts let us understand that say how the formula is derived value of leeward equity is equal to earning before interest and taxes minus interest that is ebt into 1 minus t is eat divided by cost of leeward equity this is a formula that we have for value of the leeward equity so now value of leeward equity is equal to earning before interest and taxes into 1 minus t minus interest into 1 minus t divided by cost of divided by cost of leeward equity this is 1 minus t ok now understand carefully what I am doing say I am rewriting the interest amount how do I write it it is value of the debt into rate of interest so what will happen it is earning before interest in taxes into 1 minus t divided by cost of leeward equity minus value of debt into rate of interest that is the amount of interest into 1 minus t divided by cost of leeward equity is equal to value of leeward equity now what I am doing friends I am replacing this EBIT into 1 minus t with the value that say we had derived earlier you can see that say the value that we had derived earlier was this so this amount will be replaced with the EBIT into 1 minus t. So friends what we are doing this EBIT into 1 minus t is replaced just with this value. Value of lever equity into cost of unlevered equity plus value of debt into 1 minus t into cost of unlevered equity. This I have kept as it is. Value of debt into 1 minus t into rate of interest ok this is the way we do the replacement now what I am doing say so divided by I am writing over here value of lever equity so divided by value of lever equity is equal to cost of unlevered equity that is, I am sorry, cost of lever equity. So, cost of lever equity is transferred on the left hand side and value of the lever equity is transferred on the right hand side. This is what we are doing. Now, again rewriting the equation, cost of lever equity is equal to value of lever equity into cost of unlevered equity divided by value of lever equity plus now what I am doing friends value of debt into 1 minus t value of debt into 1 minus t I am taking common value of debt into 1 minus t is taken common into in bracket I am writing cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest whole divided by value of lever equity this is the way we are required that is I am rewriting the equation value of the lever equity is cancelled on both the sides so it is 1 ok now cost of unlevered equity is transferred on the opposite side so cost of lever equity minus cost of unlevered equity is equal to 1 plus sorry 
is equal to value of debt into 1 minus t divided by value of levered equity into cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest and plus 1 over here. This is a way, I am sorry, uh, cost of unlevered equity is transferred. So, this is the way we are, I am rewriting the equation. That is, uh, what I have done, cost of levered equity minus cost of unlevered equity because value of levered equity is cancelled from the numerator and division. Value of debt into 1 minus t upon value of levered equity into this value as it is. Now, what I will do friends, this value, cost of levered equity minus cost of unlevered equity will be replaced with the value that say, we already have derived. That is with this value. Beta of levered equity minus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rm. Again this value, cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest will be replaced. It is cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest will be replaced with beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rm. So the answer is like this. Beta of levered equity minus beta of unlevered equity into Rm minus Rm is equal to value of debt into 1 minus t upon value of levered equity into beta of unlevered equity into R m minus R f. That is the way the values are replaced. Now R m minus R f on both the sides it will be cancelled. So again rewriting the equation, beta of levered equity minus beta of unlevered equity is equal to beta of unlevered equity into value of debt into 1 minus t upon value of levered equity. That is the way we are supposed to rewrite the equation. It is very simple. This value I am rewriting as it is. This I have transferred like just uh, earlier to this. So, beta upon levered equity into value of debt upon value of levered equity. Now, this value beta of unlevered equity is transferred on the opposite side. So, from negative it will become positive. So, beta of unlevered equity plus beta of unlevered equity into value of debt into 1 minus t divided by value of levered equity is equal to this value will be kept as it is that is beta of levered equity. Now friends over here on the left hand side what I am going to do I am going to take beta of unlevered equity as common. So we will have beta of unlevered equity is taken common into 1 plus, I am sorry, 1, yeah, 1 plus value of debt financing into 1 minus t divided by value of lever equity. So, what I am doing, so beta of unlevered equity is that is say taken common, that is outside. In bracket, I am writing 1. 1 in the bracket is representing beta of unlevered equity, this plus sign as it is, and this value as it is, is equal to beta of levered equity. Now, finally, beta of unlevered equity, or it is given a name as beta of asset, is equal to beta of levered equity divided by. 
वन प्लस वैल्यू ऑफ डेट इंटू वन माइनस टी अपॉन वैल्यू ऑफ लीवर इक्विटी दिस इज वॉट वी अंडरस्टैंड एंड दिस इज वॉट सर एग्जैक्टली द सेम फॉर्मूला दैट से वी ऑलरेडी हैव रिटर्न वी डी स्टैंड फॉर द डेट फाइनेंसिंग इन टू वन माइनस टी अपॉन वैल्यू ऑफ द लीवर इक्विटी स्टैंड फॉर इक्विटी फाइनेंसिंग दिस इज द वे वी हैव द फॉर्मूला डेरिवेशन सो क्विकली रिवाइजिंग द डेरिवेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अ फॉर्मूला फॉर इंटरेस्ट टैक्स सेविंग इंटरेस्ट इन टू टैक्स रेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट टैक्स सेविंग इट इज वैल्यू ऑफ द डेट इन टू टैक्स रेट वैल्यू ऑफ द लीवर फॉर्म इज वैल्यू ऑफ अनलीवर फॉर्म प्लस प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट टैक्स सेविंग सो फॉर वैल्यू ऑफ द लीवर फॉर्म आई एम सॉरी अनलीवर फॉर्म वी डिराइव अ वैल्यू लाइक दिस लेट अस से दैट सच दिस इज ए देन फॉर वैल्यू ऑफ अनलीवर फॉर्म दिस इज द फॉर्मूला बाय इटसेल्फ that is operating income into 1 minus t divided by cost of unlevered equity because value of the unlevered equity itself is a value of unlevered form so rewriting that equation and this is what we understand is so the this is b then a is compared with b and with that say we make the computation of the answer and with that say the operating income into 1 minus t is equal to value of levered equity plus co into cost of unlevered equity plus value of debt into cost of unlevered equity into 1 minus t then cost of levered equity minus cost of unlevered equity is simplified like this cost of unlevered equity minus rate of interest is simplified like this for value of the levered equity we have written the formula replacing the values as and when required and with that say we finally derive a formula like this so whenever the tax rate information is given we can say that say the formula is like this the way we have written the formula beta of unlevered equity or it is given a name as beta of asset is equal to beta of levered equity divided by 1 plus debt into 1 minus t this is what say we write divided by equity so debt stands for the weight of debt and equity stands for weight of equity that is the way we do answer